Hi, I'm Danielle Maley and I'm going to talk about my reflection on a couple readings we did. One of them is from the book Resituating Canadian Education and it's written by uh, Pacini Ketchabot and Larry Prockner and the other one I'm going to be critiquing I guess or giving a response to is um, Hayden and Iannacci's uh, book Depathologizing uh, Curricula. So I'm going to talk about some of the things I thought about at the reading. So first of all, I had a huge struggle when I was first reading these articles. Um, I couldn't tell the difference between what I believed and what um, the authors in the articles were kind of critiquing about special education. I really had to challenge if my beliefs were any different than the people that they were critiquing. Um, First of all, I thought about asset-based versus deficit-based, and I think I've really worked from a deficit base in the past, and so that's something that I was kind of challenging with myself this week. Um, and I started to wonder uh, how I could be asset-based. So one of the best ways that I think I can be asset-based is by not creating barriers for my students. Um, I had listened to a, well, actually I read a blog post by Pernil Rip, uh, the blog post was called The Small Changes I Can Make. And basically it was talking about how um, her child's teacher wouldn't give them a pencil. And it was because the kids should come with pencils and they, you know, need to be taught how to um, remember stuff and whatever. And basically she just like destroyed them in the sense of like, why are we creating barriers? Why are we not giving children pencils? Uh, thus the book I talked about this week, I'm not giving them calculators because we have this feeling that we think that they're cheating. Um, we always perform from this, uh, yeah, deficit-based point of view. So that's definitely something that challenged me this week. And one thing that I think I can do is just try to make the simplest things easy for the kids and not create extra barriers for them. So another interesting thing from the articles this week uh, was talking about how basically our entire education system is set up on uh, capitalist principles. So uh, on page 47 of the book, uh, of the book Resituating Canadian Early Childhood Education, uh, it says children are deserving of public money only if investment in their lives has clear economic payoff. How terrible is that? We only actually invest in kids' lives because we're worried about what their payoff is going to be later on. Or um, in Depathologizing, it says, Stuke proposes that readiness is a code word for preparation for the workforce and ultimately for supporting the previous generation. So again, uh, we have these code words of like being school ready and the chil like the children are ready when they can do this. And it's pretty blatantly obvious that all we care about is if they will be um, effective members of our society, which basically means producing money. Uh, so that the older generation can live off of them um, and just continually, uh, I guess, promote and help our system thrive, um, which is, I guess, neoliberalism. So I do love that chapter five of the Depathologizing book. Um, Hayden actually gives some suggestions. Uh, I know that we're really bad in education for complaining about stuff and for um, bringing up things that we find negative and never offering a solution. So I really appreciate that um, they're offering a solution here. So basically, um, it says persons interested in pursuing this re or deconstruction should begin considering how special education is, in fact, a means of legitimating an education system that does not know how to respect diversity. That was on page 154 and 155. So uh, until we can actually look at our education system and realize that we don't put the value on um, people with disabilities or special needs, uh, we can't even move forward. So we have to start deconstructing that view of education before any other good can happen. Um, I really do believe that it starts with us um, looking at our own biases and kind of breaking down what we already think, which is basically what I've been doing all week. Um, and the biggest thing for me is starting to realize that uh, I cannot look from the just medical point of view that this child has this and this and this. I really need to start switching um, my understanding of assets and, and what that looks like. So that's my goal and we're going to see how this class continues continues to change my mind on that and to help me think in that different way.